Can I ask a spicy follow up? What about with Shannon Sharp? What about? What what's going on with that right now? Welcome to Point Game with John Wall and CJ Toledano presented by DraftKings. Don't forget, DraftKings is your home for all the action across the NBA and gets you closer to the game we all love. The crown is yours. Guys, special episode. I'm going to bring on our guest right now because he is maybe my favorite person of all time. On today's episode, we are joined by four-time NBA champ, three-time finals MVP, 15-time all-star, the big Aristotle himself, ladies and gentlemen, Shaquille O'Neal on Point Game. Shaquille, Shaquille, how you doing, man? First of all, CJ, turn off that goddamn radio voice when you're talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't usually talk like this. I'm like, Shaq is on. Yeah. I think I have to, like, be all, you know. Too excited college. right now. He I too know. Yeah, right. What's going on, bro? What's up, John Wall? What's up, Legend? Thank you for coming on today, man. I ain't doing much. Chilling. How are you? I'm doing good, brother. In time. What's happening? Not much. We wanted to have you on the show and, you know, just talk NBA playoffs, and then I had a few questions about your story, and we just want to talk ball. If that's cool with you, of course. Um, so I, I know you're on you're on you know TV every night talking uh, playoffs happening right now, but we wanted to start off the show by talking about the Knicks. You know they went up 2-0, then they went to Indiana, and the Pacers came right back. So I wanted to ask: Do you think the Knicks are tired? Do you think Tibbs' game plan of playing you know only like seven eight guys and, and playing them at major run times is affecting them now? Yes and no, because John will understand what I'm about to say. It's a lot more physical back in our day. And I hate going back to our day, but it was way more physical. Like, I don't see how you can just be tired from running pick and rolls all day. You know, it ain't really no hard flagging fouls. It ain't really, I don't, you know, so, you know, like I, I hear a couple of guys talking about how physical the game is, but that's not really the physical that John and myself were used to. So I don't see how they can be tired. But I like uh, Brunson's response. Hey, man, no excuses. Uh, we just got to come out and, you know, play our game. I really – I knew G- Brunson was nice. I didn't know he was that nice. Yeah. Mine's been what John used to do. Mine's been what the AI did, a guy that was very small, but just, could, you know, post up, the fadeaways, get into the lane absorb a lot of contact, and, you know, he's, 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 he's doing very well. And my man been, been uh, lighting it up, too. Uh, Spanish cat that was a Golden State. What's his name? Uh, Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah, yeah. DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo been lighting it up. But he's was, going back to like he had a national championship game. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he was fighting. This, listen, both teams just did what they're supposed to do. They won at home. I really like Ty- Tyrese Halliburton. I, 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 ooh, I like his game. I like the way that, that team was playing. That game three, they almost let it get away. But, you know, game four, they, they came back and they they play with more desperation than the Knicks did and they just blew them out. But, as we all know, this next game is the most important game. Most important. Yes, sir. And, 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 like, I used to hear that a lot in the playoffs. And I'm sure you did too, John. Like, this, we, we need this game. This is like the most <laughs> important game. But this game five, with three games left, I think the team that wins this game is the team that's going to win the series. Yeah, that's mostly how I go. You know, whoever wins game five, if it's 2-2, two, two, they usually win the whole series. And like you said, I think the Knicks, I don't – like, it's not that physical. I just think they're not playing – they play guys, they play a lot. But, you know, OG going down really hurt them a lot. You know what I mean? OG is a big piece of their team. And they were 26-5 and five when he played. And I think just Halliburton, when he's been aggressive since game one, he's been more aggressive. And their team goes how he goes. So when he's aggressive, they're tough to deal with. I think it go. I don't know. I, I before I had it going six or seven, but I don't know. I think Indiana might get it in six if they can win the next game. That'll be nice. So last night we saw Denver top the series two two. Who you think win that series and why? Because I know when we seen what happened with Minnesota the first two games, we were like, oh shit, it's getting bad. Cat is the key. Mm. And that went crazy last night with, with, with 40 something. And Cat had a dismal game. You know, if they can both play well like they did in game one and two, it'll be tough for, for Denver. Listen, you're not going to stop Joker. Joker's a, he's a, he's, he's, he's different. You know, you can't let Jamal get off. So again, I just said it 
42 seconds ago, this next game is going to be most important. I like I like the young fella, Ant, because he reminds me of us, old school players, talk smack. And, you know, uh, I was watching at the end of the game when he was talking to Jamal, and we actually on TNT. He's like, hey, I told his ass. I told his ass to, hey, I like that. And so, you know, I know he's going to be ready, but if Cat can – if Cat can give me a 30-something and Ant give me a 30-something, I, I still like Minnesota. But you can never count out the chance. They woke yeah, up. Yeah, I need. I think Cat need to be like like the series he was against Phoenix. He was posting up KD a lot. When they go on smaller guys on it with Michael Porter and Caldwell Pope, he has to post up more. Yeah, I think he's standing on the perimeter a little too much. And that kind of goes back to what we said in our area, the physicality in the game. Like, he should be dominant down there to make them get double teams to open up open shots for those other guys because Ant's going to be Ant, man. man. He's been aggressive. He's been spectacular all playoffs. And he's not backing down. He's talking his shit, and he wants all the smoke. And I hate when Cat trying to get in and drive and be flailing looking for the call. <laughs> that bro, just take one or two dribbles and just go up strong and just go up hard. But, you know, he, uh, he's the key. And, you know, whenever you have a, whenever you have a one-two punch and you want to go far, the one and the two have to play with other players. That's – that's unfortunate. You know, a lot of teams have, you know, three or four guys that can, you know, come in on any night and play well. But in order for Minnesota to get to the next level, they have to play well. And Nas Reed has to, you know, kick in. And, you know, all the others have to kick in. Now, Shaq, can I ask you if, if Jokic goes out and leads them to close the series out in the next two games, do you think your opinion and your stance on Jokic for MVP changes a little bit? No, because I was always taught that the MVP is a regular season award. So, you know, I, I like to, and I hate when people act like they don't hear me when I speak clearly. When I, you see, the reason why I told Joker man to man, because, you know, when you say things, everybody want to get in and twist it. And the first thing I told him, I said, you're the best big man in the league, but this is no disrespect to you. I want to tell you here so people ain't twisting my words. I thought SGA should have gotten MVP. That's that's not a diss. That's cool. That's called real. You, John, you my guy, but I think Def Curry got better handle. That ain't a diss to John. John, you my guy, but I think a spell web jump higher than you. That's that's not a diss. <laughs> that, you know what I'm saying? That's just how but you, know, you, get all, you know, you get all these idiots that want to get on their little platform and, you know, make a name for themselves and try to twist my words like when they say I don't like, like all big men, I don't, but I like Joker. I like him beat. And I, I don't think I ever said anything bad about Joker because he plays the game the right way. He keeps his teammates involved. He plays his style. He does what he does. But I think what SGA did, and I'm sticking up for the kid. I, you know, nobody else is. I'm, listen, he's one of 50 players that got 30 points in 50 games. Nobody was talking about OKC at the beginning of the year. It was Denver. It was Philly. It was Boston. They threw the Lakers in there. It's like Golden State. Can they make a last run? It was the Clippers. Like we, all those names. Nobody said a name about OKC. And what that kid did was tremendous. And now the fact that he has to start all over. And then guess what? It ain't going to be easy next year because Ant Man coming. Ant Man coming. You know, Victor coming. You know, you got a lot of people coming. So it's just unfortunate when you work hard like that and then you don't come away with, with that award because. I've said this for many years. What is the criteria for most valuable player? You can't say most valuable player, which is a single award, and then always include the team. I think it I I think it should be if your team is one through eight, you can be considered MVP. John and myself know MVP means the baddest motherfucker in the league. Period. <laughs> for Period. sure. That's what and I'm glad you brought it up because I was like the criteria. I'm like, for one, they always said it was winning. They always said have these numbers, but that's not a, that's not MVP. That means I'm not the most valuable player to my team. And what Shea did, everybody had them as a playing team. Nobody had them finishing top three, top two in the West, and they go out there and get the number one seed. And what he did every night, he's the go-to guy down the stretch. He got those young guys to play at a high level with the youngest team in the league. So, for sure, you know what I mean? Jokic won, congratulations. Like you say, he's the baddest motherfucker in the game. We're not taking away from him, but I feel like SGA should have been MVP of this league. And, then, uh, and it's nothing against Jokic, it's nothing against none of the other guys. Because if I feel like if Embiid would have been healthy, he probably would have won it. The exactly. numbers he was putting up. And then, and then you could tell the voters, the voters don't know what they're doing. My man had 15 votes, really. <laughs> SGA had 15 votes. Come on, bro. So they, how far, how far you think Ant Man can go in his league? 
really far. Uh, I, I think if they continue to put the right pieces around him, and, you know, he just keeps playing the way he plays. Listen, the kid is a nice looking kid. He has a great personality. Uh, I know he's going to go over there and do work in the Olympics this summer. He's just making his name for himself, you know, because, you know, Minnesota's not really a big market, but, you know, because he's, he's on the team. They're probably gonna get way, 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 way more TV games. So got to, got to like, listen. He can, like they're already making comparisons to Jordan and D Wade, but I like the way this kid plays because he plays the right way and he plays hard and he plays with that tenacity of a dog. You think he takes that D Wade role on Olympic team as a six man? Now D Wade came in that year. No, I think I think it, I think his personality. Listen, he's a he's a team player. Like you, like me, but he he knows when. Hey, this 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 dude from France can't guard me. I'm gonna go to work. <laughs> he he's he not gonna go there and be like this. Is my team, but when he gets that ball, he's gonna be looking to do what he do first. And if not, he gonna make the right play. So, you know, D Wade uh, was, was was similar. He was like that. And, you know, D Wade was like the ultimate team player. He could have been the leader of that team, but when you got all those big man personalities, sometimes it's just okay to to, to sit back because. As you know, we all can eat. We all can eat. Like, you know, just because just one guy gets gets all the credit, I'm still going, you know, do what I do. I learned that in uh, college. I played a guy named Mahmoud Abdul-Raouf because, you know, I was I was telling my sons this. Because, you know, I, I was telling my sons that my life was always like this. High school wasn't that really good. Number one high school player. Go to college. Hey, man, you got to wait your turn. Number one college player. Hey man, you come to the NBA, they got Barkley, they got you, and then you just boom, work, 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 work. So, you know, D Wade is the guy that's just, that, uh, you know, and, and I'll be the guy that will just sit back and let everybody do their thing. But when he gets his opportunity to make noise, he definitely make a noise. Period. For sure. Yeah, let him be Ant, too. Okay, Shaq, I wanted to get into some Shaq news. Um, there's been some stories right now about the bidding war a little bit between NBC and Turner with NBA rights. And I think I speak for everyone when we say if next season is the last season of Inside the NBA, that's going to break our hearts. So I wanted to know what sort of going through your mind right now, seeing some of that stuff. Um, you we, know, We don't really have any information on it. Yeah. On it. I don't like to think left or think right. But, you know, uh, I... I agree with you. It would be the end of that show. I think it would be a travesty to everyone. First, the Fat Boys break up. First, run DMC and break up. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, be devastating. We don't have a lot of information. We don't, we don't know what's going on. But hopefully, the uh, powers that be will make sure that this. The show goes on forever. Well, can you also just speak on like how you know people have said or Ernie has said he's going to stay with Turner, and you know maybe you guys go find a new home. And can you can just kind of speak on how important Ernie has been well, to the run? I don't listen. Ernie Ernie is the best in the business. I'm, again, I don't want to think left like oh right, we have okay. a deal with you know. I don't want to think right oh we get another ten years right now. You just have, I'm, I'm I'm actually in the same place you are. We, we don't know. We don't know what's going on, so we'll just sit back and we'll see what happens. But hopefully, hopefully, you know, the show continues. For sure. That's the best show in business, man. Y'all be having right out there. They're dying laughing. So <laughs> they got to keep it. I remember I came up there when they were doing the all-star thing one time. We was up there joking in the back. I was like, yeah. I don't know if y'all see behind the scenes. This shit is hilarious. It's yeah. all jokes and comedy back there. Yes. So the lottery, they did the lottery. Atlanta, Washington, Houston got the top three picks. Some people are complaining yet again that the worst team – didn't crack the top three. Like, what do you think about that, and what's the benefits of the lottery? I mean, I don't know who's out there, but you know, they're talking about this kid in France and how he would be a, a next uh, generation type player. I mean, it's, it's it's been the same way forever. So I don't I don't like when they take things and, and change it. Like when they change the, the All Star game, the first team to get one. Hey, like, bro, let's just play. But I would like to see Team USA versus Team World. I would mm-hmm. like that. I would like to see that in the All-Star game because, you know, some guys take the All-Star game seriously, some don't. I'm not going to comment on that because I did both. Uh, so, but in Atlanta, so GM John Wall, do you keep Trey and DeJounte or do you trade them and get that number one pick and you start along? What would you do? For me, I think uh, I think they made a trade with DeJounte just in case they might want to move on from Trey Young down the road. You know what I mean? Because he's been the point guard in 
San Antonio, so somewhere. But I would let DeJounte Murray become a starting point guard for them. Trade Trey Young, let him start. For me, I was saying earlier before we got on, I think trading Trey Young to San Antonio would be dope to put him with Wimby. Yeah, but you think Pop Pop won't let him shoot them 80 footers? Hey, that, hey, sometimes we need some controlling. Sometimes we need a little adjustment. You know, sometimes we need some adjustments yeah, okay. to get things the right way. Kind of like uh, if you like Phil Jackson, probably you probably did some stuff before when Phil came, he was like, listen, Shaq, for yeah. us to get to where we want to get to, to get to where you want to get to, we gotta make some changes. And like you said, for us as pros, if we want to really worry about winning and get to our next steps in our career, we got to make certain adjustments. That's true. And I think that would be a nice adjustment to make. Well, piggybacking on that, can you tell us kind of specifically why you think you and Kobe worked so well? Because we don't see – like we see guard big combos, you know, with Jamal and Jokic, and I think we can say why that worked. But I'm curious what you think worked so well between you and Kobe. Mentality, man. When you got two guys competing with each other on the same team and nobody's going to break, that spells disaster for everybody yeah. else. I've said this as a big man, and this was taught to me by Dominique Wilkins. You want to be a dominant big man, you got to average 28 too. That's the important part support. So I'm going to get my 28. I don't really care what anybody else is doing. So now if you got another guy that's trying to outdo you and get 28, 30, they go 60 points right there. Now all you got to do is Get him with Derek Fisher and say, you know what, Shaq's tired. Let me go to Kobe. You know, Kobe, Kobe just missed four shots in a row. Let me go to Shaq. Now you need a, a guy that's going to, you know, hit deadly shots, a big shot by Now you need a veteran to calm everything down, Brian Sharp. Now you need a guy who's really tough on defense, Rick Fox. So, you know, the fact that, and then, John, you made a great point about sacrificing. Because I wasn't a good free throw shooter, I had to sacrifice and say, you know what, go on, young fellow, you take it. And once I started doing that, we started winning the championship. I'm going to go and get my 20 year early, get the team in the penalty, boom, boom, bam, and do that. Hopefully, you know, I'm getting free throws. But in the fourth quarter, especially like the closing games, just getting the ball and you just go over. You don't have to revert to a role player, get offense rebound, set the picks, and make sure you do it. And once we establish that, you know, we definitely going to start winning the championships. I think I say you're the most dominant player of all time. You're the last person since Jordan to win, scoring title, MVP of the league, and the championship in the same year. Who do you think is the most dominant yeah, right but, now? Yeah, but according to some idiots, I didn't take it seriously. <laughs> I know. Because I, you have personality? Go, I seen, I seen, I seen yeah. it back and forth. And for me, it's like you were so dominant. It's like some people might think you wasn't taking it serious, but nobody could stop me. It was all up to me. I was getting the job done. I won. Th I three-peat. Everybody. Uh, and, and then – my, my, my response to that is, one, my arrogant response is, work hard for who? Work hard for who? Like, who, who going to stop me anyway? That's my arrogant response. And my other response is, I don't have to work that hard. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I don't have to work that hard to do what I need to do because it's up here. Yeah. You know that. And then, you know, all that five hours in the gym, some people need to do that to get that level. I came in him. Remember, I, I, I came in him. I, I didn't come like, you know, some guys, you know, came in and had to work their way through in two, three years and four yeah. or five months. Right? That's what you have to do to get to your spot. I did what I did. And let's see, three retired jerseys, two statues. You see them balls behind me. So how could you say I didn't take the <laughs> that's why, And That's why I say G14 classification is important. Like if you if you don't have G fourteen class like like for example when it comes to being a great guard John Wall you have G fourteen classification so you could say you know what Murray's taking that step back well maybe you should you know lean on me and go to the left maybe you should take a you know step you know what I'm saying like you have G fourteen classification to say that nobody else does and that's why I think that's important but thank you for that I uh, I wanted to be the most dominant you know the 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 title the best I never had that. No matter, like, uh, as a youngster, I wasn't the best player on the team. You know, I was the best player on the high school team, but that's because it was a small team, but I wasn't the best player on my college team. I wasn't the best player on none of my great teams. You tell me I'm better than Penny Hardaway? No. You tell me I'm better than Kobe? No. You tell me I'm better than D-Wade? No. You tell so I, I wasn't looking to be the best. I was looking to be what I was, and that was the most dominant ever. So thank you for saying that. I just yeah, they got to respect that. They're like, but a lot of people – with your resume and coming with that mindset, wouldn't say they wasn't the best. You know what I mean? Yeah. Most people come in, I gotta be the best, I gotta be the best. 
And your mindset was, well, I'm going to be the most dominant, and it's still going to help my team win, so who can stop me? The only thing that I'm disappointed in, I miss a lot of free throws. So let's say I got 28,000 points. I miss plenty. Yeah, about 50,000 points. That's what I'm saying. So I miss 10,000 free throws. Let's say I would miss how to add <laughs> four more. They go 32,000 right there. And then they probably wouldn't have fouled you as much more, so then you would have more easy ones. They would have fouled me anyway. Bro. <laughs> no, I know. No, but again, that's the only thing that, that, that upsets me about my life. Because as you know, when it's gone, you can never get it back. So. I missed 10,000 free throws. So just give me 3,000 off of that. That would have been 31,000 points. And then there's 250 games due to injury, you know. I got my hand broke twice, knee, stomach, and so 250, that's 20. That's another 5,000 points. I would have been at, I would have been at 36,000. I probably would have been, probably would have been, that's the only thing I'm, I'm upset about. All that, he didn't work hard. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, now, you talked. You yeah. talked about your admiration for Candace Parker. You spoke very highly of her and all that she did for the game when she recently announced her retirement. She is a, a beautiful person inside out. You know, so humble, loves the game. She's like us. She, she she talks that talk. She walks that walk, and she plays with that tenacity. Beautiful girl, and just you know, play. Just 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 play so hard, and you know, she wanted to be the best. And, I actually saw a documentary with what with, with, with her and Pat Summit went through in, in UT. I never knew that happened, but I, I can see where she, you know, she gets her tough and well, She's she's tough because she's from Chicago, but you know, you 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 had an element like that, Pat Summit, all the things she did at Tennessee. Candace has been a beast since day one. I think she's about to have, you know, when you retire, when Chuck retired, everyone was like, "Well, great players. We'll see what they do next." But like then. You know, you've gone on this insane run as a media personality, as a businessman. I think we're about to see, the, we're seeing the beginning of Candace in that sort of era. Yeah, she, you know, Sky is a little friend. I think she was just named uh, president of women's Adidas basketball. And well, she's, she's, a, she's a very bright young lady, so she can, uh, she can actually do whatever she wants to do. Shaq, I wanted to ask you about this because everyone was raving over the uh, Tom Brady roast uh, that happened a about a week ago. But I don't know if a lot of people remember, you've had roasts for years. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to know what you thought of the Tom Brady roast and if anything ever topped that moment that Jamie Foxx, you know, was, was roasting uh, Doug Williams. I'm, I'm a funny guy. <laughs> we know. No, nothing, nothing really hurt my feelings. You can piss me <laughs> off, but you can never hurt my feelings. I think that roast was very brutal. Like, like some of that stuff, like some of that stuff, a lot of people are gonna be complaining in today's society. However, I think it was funny as shit. I was yeah. rolling. That that, <laughs> that that young lady, Miss Glazer, oh my yeah. god! Like I had never seen her before. She was the best on that roast. Like Andrew Schultz, you know, Kevin Hart. It was. And listen, when I was watching it, chill. I was cracking up and like I'm, I'm the type that like for example like if you and John said said to me right now Shaq we're gonna say some jokes I already know that in the laugh mode and now I'm just I just want to see you here and see your jokes hit I won't be like what the fuck like I think you know the world we live in now is a little bit too sensitive so Shaq you're a successful businessman when did you start thinking about life after basketball how did you build your portfolio I my father was a drill sergeant, I don't know if you know, and every time somebody in the NBA did something crazy, I would get punished for it. So, you know, all the guys that uh, would lose their money, he would just come in the house and just go crazy. So, you know, at 19, when all the money was coming in, Magic Johnson said to me, it's okay to, you know, be famous and do, do all this stuff, but at some point, you want to start earning, uh, owning things. And I, I, I didn't know what he meant, so I, I, I would see him. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, bro, when you retire, you ain't going to be making the same money, so you want to create businesses so you can have the same, the same income. And when he said that, I was thinking about one person, my mother. Because John probably has a similar story. My mom and dad didn't have much. We never had a house. We used to go from army base to army base. They never had their own house. So I can remember that when I first got drafted. I tricked my parents because you know, I, I had a very lucrative contract. I think it was 40 for seven. So we wanted to go house hunting. So I, I saw this big house. And it was only 600000 Now I'm not, you know, bragging on the price, but it was a nice big house. So we, we looked at it. I was like, Mom, how do you like this house for me? And she was like, baby, it's a little too big, but can you afford it? I was like, yeah, we can afford it. She's like, yeah, you should get it. 
When I handed her the keys, before the key touched her hand, it was tears coming out of her face. And she was like, baby, what is this? I was like, this your house. Baby, we can't afford this. It's paid for already. And that was the best feeling for me to be able to, you know, reward my parents. And then I told my dad, open the garage, my boy. He's like, that's your car. I was like, nope, it's your car. He's like, no, that's the one you got. I said, bro, we got the same car. We got him a black on black Mercedes Benz, like, you know, a drill sergeant who probably only makes 60000 a year, take the taxes out. He can pay 45000 a year, had to feed five, six kids, had to feed my big ass and get me some big ass shoes. So they really, really ain't, ain't have much. So the fact that I could do that for them, and I was saying to myself, you know, when I retire, I want to continue to, you know, do that for them. Yeah, that's all it's about for sure. I, I guess just following up on that, Shaq, how, how do you do everything? You know, now you're on Inside one night, and then we'll see you on social media. You'll be in L.A., and then you'll be the next night after that getting your jersey retired in Orlando. So what is, like, the day in the life of Shaq like? So I wake up, and I come here in my office, and I check my calendar and I see what I have to do. But they ask me a question, same thing you and John are doing now, delegation. So we all can do a podcast by ourselves, but we know guys like you that are really serious to it. We have to partner up with people like that. So you know, all the, like for example, I got my own shoe company, but I really I partner up with a guy that has a shoe company, factory design, and then we just do a, a joint venturership. And I think that that would be the e- easiest way for athletes to conduct business. You know, we like to come in and do things ourselves. There's no way we can play playoffs. A lot of China, look at this, meet with full locker. So you yeah. have to you know, so you have to delegate your time a lot. That's dope. What piece of advice stuck with you the most of your journey and why? Before you succeed, you must first learn to fail. You know, I'm probably the only legend that got swept six times. Thank so you. yeah, I got swept six times. I got swept in the finals in Orlando. Then Kobe got swept three years in a row when we first got to LA. Uh, then I got, I got swept another time and then another time. But I can remember after uh, the Bulls beat the Orlando Magic in 96, I'm walking out the court and like, Michael said, Michael Jordan, before he succeeds, you must first learn to fail. So I, I, I wrote it down. I'm like, what the fuck is Mike talking about? And then I'll, I'll just go back and watch all these other guys and look at the Detroit series and Boston series. Like, they had to, they had to take those bumps and bruises before they got them out. And I was like, oh. So that, that was the biggest quote that I you know, stuck with. Yeah. Shaq, I read a recent poll that you are literally the most recognizable person on the planet. What what do you have to say to that? And do you think there's anyone else besides you that's maybe the most recognizable? My mother caught me being arrogant one day. And she said, it costs you, you nothing to be less. And I was like, you know what? She's right. This, I don't want no beef, I don't want no problem. I'm 50 years old, I done been through all that. Meet me over here, let's, let's catch a fade. 50. No comes after 50, 60. No comes after 60, 70. So I just try to make people happy, I just try to make people smile. And, you know, when I'm doing my job, I uh, know we criticize a lot, but if you listen to my criticism, it's a little bit of information in there. You know, like I may say, like for example, Cat needs to play well. He didn't play well last night. He needs to, you know, stop shooting the three, go to the post. You know, yeah. uh, a, a real person that understands this thing of ours will be like, oh, he's telling me what I need to do. A person that doesn't listen will be like, oh, the game is different. We don't do that anymore. And, and then you keep going back and forth and then they, oh, Shaq, don't like Cat. No, I'm telling you what you have to do. Because remember, I have G14 classification, big man. You know, I, I, I haven't played in your position, but I, I play with guys really like Shaq. Give me four or five touches in the post and watch me go to work. And then I became the guy at the top and I would dive and you know, get an easy bats. Like, you know, I play with guys like Horace Grant who, you know, can go on the post at 6'10 and, 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 you know, score every time you want. So I try not to sound like I'm hating when I have criticized. <laughs> can I ask a spicy follow-up? What about with Shannon Sharp? What about? What, what's going on with that right now? No, I just I just think in, in order to talk about certain things, you have to have G14 classification. And not only that, when when you when you talk, just make it make sense. You know, when you say you don't take it seriously, why don't I have three retired jerseys? Why don't I have two 
statue where I don't have four balls standing right behind me. So if that's not, oh, those are enemies, excuse me. But if I, <laughs> if I don't take it seriously, like I don't, I don't understand. And then don't, don't talk like you know me. Don't, don't, don't talk like you know me. Oh, he didn't take it seriously. And then he had a lot of injuries. Got my hand broke twice, six weeks, six weeks. Uh, I had a knee injury, a one foot dunk, dude on the penalty came down, blew up my cap for eight weeks. I tried to dunk and the dude helped me blow out of stomach muscle. So I ain't never had no out of shape, hamstring injury. So don't just be talking when you don't have that G14 classification. And again, you talk about, uh, you know, I'm envious of the joker. I'm, I'm not envious of anybody. Do you know what it takes to get me back? I just said my opinion that I thought SGA should have got the MVP, but they, they need clicks. Some people need clicks sometimes. So they say, oh, Shaq, uh, no, I'm, I'm not a hitter. That's why when I was talking to Joker on my show, you go back to it and you can replay the clip. I said, Joker, I want you to hear from me first, my boy. I want you to hear from me first. And, and this is how I'm saying it. I said, hey, you're the best big man. However, I think and that's all it was. But they take it and they take excerpts and, oh, Shaq, he already don't like Dwight Howard. He don't like. You don't like no big man, and they try to make it seem like I was hating. But I was just giving my opinion. I'm always giving my opinion, and I'm always standing on my opinion, whether it's right or wrong. And I don't give a fuck who likes it. <laughs> it's just, but again, I say now, Joker is the best big man in the league. I've been saying that. I've never said anything bad about Joker because he plays the right way. Love that kid, love his family. And, you know, people may be mad, but hey, that's life. You did it respectfully. You know, I, I I could be joker, 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 and then get on my podcast and be like, oh, that, no, I didn't do it. I told him, I said, joker. and then listen, he, and guess what? Joker was cool. He said, hey, Shaq, what's your opinion? He laughed. We laughed about it. And I said, and I said, bro, one thing we're always going to do is keep it real. Because I am the leader of the Big Man Alliance, which means I got the most G14 classification. And until somebody else gets four rings, I will never be removed. Well, Shaq, man, we love you and appreciate you for uh, taking the time and talking with us. Good luck with the, the rest of the inside and all that. All right, welcome back to Point Game with John Wall and CJ Toledona presented by DraftKings. Don't forget, Bucket or Brick is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings Sportsbook is your home for all things NBA action from player props, same game parlays. Check out everything DraftKings Sportsbook has to offer to make your NBA experience even sweeter. The crown is yours. John, it's come to that time of the episode where we're going to play a little bit of uh, Bucket or Brick. So you ready? All right, so this first one, the Pacers are now the favorite to win the series over the Knicks at minus 120, meaning if you bet $120, you win 100. So bucket or brick, the Pacers will win this series against the Knicks. Um, but I just think uh, they just banged up. You know what I mean? Jalen Brunson, he's tough dog fighting through his uh, right foot injury, if I'm not mistaken. And then OG been out with the hamstring. Then also losing Mitchell Robinson was tough for them. You know what I mean? I think they only – and then they lost Badanovich, I think, at the game one or before game one. So they only play like seven to eight guys. So I think that's catching up to them and uh, they missing some key pieces. Now, I wouldn't even say Ty, uh, Tyrese Halliburton is like playing extraordinary. What What do you think has been the the sort of main ingredient to the Pacers uh, taking control? Well, I think the key for them is uh, a lot of people don't speak on it, uh, but TJ McConnell and Obi mm -hmm. Toppin has really been a difference making this series for me. You know what I mean? TJ is coming off the bench, keeping the pace into the game. Um, picking it up, trying to make it tough on Jalen Brunson as best you can. You know what I mean? He's gifted and crafty as everything he does. But, uh, I mean, one game he came in, I think game one he had like 20 points almost. Then game two he played okay. Then game three he played well, had another big scoring game. And last night he had 10 assists. I mean, so when those two guys come off the bench and play well for them, I think that gives them that momentum and that energy they need. But uh, I think putting Neesmith Smith on uh, Jalen Brunson, yeah. you're not going to stop him. But it's a bigger body, more physical, more athletic. Uh, than them bar and it kind of yeah, helped them I, out a lot. The TJ McConnell thing, it's like people were saying in game two, if he would have played down the stretch, they could have had a major chance to close that one out. So I think. Yeah, for sure. For sure. X factor. Yes. Okay. Number two, SJ finished second in the MVP race this season. So bucket or brick, Shea will win next MVP next year. Um, I'll say brick. I mean, I don't know. I think he should have won this year. That's my opinion. I think he should have won it. I mean, like we just said, uh, Jokic just. The best player in the league, uh, best big man, you know what I mean? He's a hell of a talent. Um, I think if NB was healthy, he probably would have won. You know what I mean? You never know. But 
I think Shea deserved it just because they're the number one team in the West. Nobody expected them to be this good. They have a young team. Um, and it would have been dope because they coach one coach of the year. I mean, if you're a coach one coach of the year, I feel like your best player should win MVP of the year. And uh, I just think next you never know because the way Ant-Man is playing right now, you know what I mean, is coming back. You got Jokic coming back. Those guys are playing high level. You have Luka. It's coming back, so I just don't know. All right, so the next one, Austin Rivers has uh, been making headlines uh, for his comments about NBA players being able to play in the NFL. So, bucket or brick, you could have played in the NFL. For sure. Yeah, I definitely could have played. I think if I would have stuck to it when I was in high at the middle school, going to high school and really put my work ethic towards trying to be an NFL player, yeah, I could. I mean, I'm, I'm fast, I'm athletic, I can catch the ball. What do you think – not saying what do you I think would be the biggest uh, learning curve for you and, and NBA players crossing over? Well, for me, I already played football, so it's not really too much to learn. It's just really working on my craft every day. You know what I mean? Like, no matter if you played it your whole life, like, it's the same thing you see some football players that play basketball in high school, right? They was good. But would they play in the NBA? They probably could, but they didn't put the work ethic to catch out to be an NBA player, so they probably got certain things they have to learn and work on. It's the same for me. If I already played in football before at a high level, high school, whatever, I feel like I could have played. It's just so much more you got to learn. But it's not easy to get there. You know what I mean? If it was that easy, I know a lot of guys that's talented in basketball and football that didn't make it to the pros. I mean, so if it's that easy, it would be a cakewalk. But I think we're athlete enough to play in that area and they're athlete enough to play in ours. If, if you would have to say an NFL player to cross over and play NBA, who, who do you think would be the best NFL player to cross over in history? I think you could say all time, all time. or just I can think about Tony Gonzalez played some summer league or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I remember Randy Moss was good. Yeah. He played with Jason Williams in high school. Um, mm, I don't know, man. It's yeah. tough. There's a lot of guys that play well. Like I didn't know T Higgins was that mm-hmm. athletic and play. You know what I mean? But he was good. Uh, I think once the kid named Keon Coleman. I was Buffalo. about to say his highlights. Keon Coleman, crazy. like he was highlights are crazy. Um, I've seen Devontae Smith highlights. So, you know, I mean, they all could play shit. We've seen Allen right. Iverson play football shit. He was state champion. So, um, you don't know. You don't never know how it would be, but I know a lot of guys played, so they could play if they really put yeah. the work towards it. Yeah. All right, final one. Uh, the draft lottery just happened, and the Wizards now have the number two pick. So, bucket or brick, the Wizards should take a Kentucky player with their first-round pick. <laughs> ah. I don't know. Robert Reed. Robert Reed. Robert Reed. I th- they're both guards. You know what I mean? I think they have Jordan Poole right now. They have Ty Jones. Um, I say I would love them to go high, but I say brick. I don't think they're due to that. I think they got to try to find out if they want a center. I don't, they don't have a starting center right now. I think they use Marvin mm-hmm. Bagley a lot this year, a little bit when they made the trades. Right. Um, Kuz is there four. Danny Alves is there three. Um, so I think they just got to figure out which way they want to go. Do they want a big man or do they want a wing? to try to build around and make their franchise. So I think it's a big decision for them. You know what I mean? They had a number one pick with me before. They had a number three pick uh, with Bradley Bill and Otto Porter. Then we had a couple of lottery picks early after that. And I think this is the highest one they got since me or since they drafted Brad and Otto there. So it's, it's going to be good. I think they got what the kid from France they got. They're supposed to be high. They have Alice Scar that could be high. Um, Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know which way they'll go, but. They have opportunity to build off what they want to, and they got a new front office. I mean, not from a new front office and all those guys. So whatever path they want to build their team off around, they can go that way. Yeah. All right. That's dope. All right, John, this has been another episode of Point Game. What do you want to leave the audience with here today? Hey, man, continue, continue to subscribe, watch the show. We're getting better and better. It's a lot of fun. We're enjoying this playoff run that's going on, a lot of great basketball, and uh, just check out what's going on. That's right. All right. This has been Point Game presented by DraftKings. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the pod. Um, leave a five-star review and, and drop some questions. Me and John will answer them on an upcoming episode. Everyone take care, and we'll see you next time. Peace. 